Uh, he's the former professor of pathology and former NHS consultant pathologist, Dr. John Lee. Uh, good afternoon, uh, John. Good afternoon. Uh, yes, uh, the, the World Health Organization, amongst many other uh, eminent uh, scientists, doctors, virologists and epidemiologists, uh, say that lockdowns uh, aren't particularly effective. In fact, uh, they may do more harm than they are good and that nations should not pursue this policy. And yet the nation of Great Britain seems to pursue lockdowns in a, an ever more virulent and vehement way. Uh, what do you feel? Isn't it time at least Boris started and his sage mates started to look at possibly alternative ways of an approach to this virus because so far everything they've done hasn't worked look at us now yeah i quite agree i mean uh, in, in a nutshell lockdowns are wrong they should not be the policy um whenever you make a health into and in fact it's, it's long beyond the time when the government should have changed uh, its its attitude to this and its approach there's lots of real world data now that demonstrates this quite clearly the thing is with any health intervention, you always have to weigh up the harms that it causes versus the harms that it prevents. So if you're going to operate on a patient, every surgeon has to ask the question, you know, is it better for me to do this operation or would it be better for me for the patient for me to leave them alone? Um, so the question with lockdowns is, are the harms that are directly attributable to lockdown uh, greater or less than the harms that would be caused by the virus if we let it uh, spread throughout society in the way it pretty much is doing anyway. Um, and as I say, there's clear real world evidence that lockdowns are much worse than uh, the virus would be if we did absolutely nothing. And, and the reason for this is, is, is partly because the government isn't counting uh, the way the virus is affecting us and assessing the threat properly, um, and partly because they're not also counting the harms of lockdown. We, we're constantly regaled with death numbers as if death, you know, that blunt endpoint, is the only measure of health. And of course, it is one measure of health, but quality of life uh, is another a very important measure of health that every doctor always considers in every health intervention that they make. And clearly, uh, lockdowns have an enormous effect on quality of life for hundreds of millions of people who are not even affected very much by the virus. So when you add that all up, it's absolutely incontrovertible that lockdowns are the wrong approach and they're causing more harm than good and they're overturning you know, centuries held medical dictum that first you do no harm. Uh, but if the government's going to insist on this, surely it's incumbent upon them to provide the evidence that they've been in any way effective. Well, absolutely. I mean, the point is, if we live in a, in a, in a free democratic society, openness in debate is one of the things that's the hallmark of our society and yet the government have been unwilling to debate with me or anybody else who's skeptical of their claims about what they're doing in any way they uh, the bbc for example it seems to me have been essentially censored uh, and become a propaganda channel anybody who supports the government narrative is on anybody who doesn't you simply don't hear from them mm. the fact is it's worse than the fact that the government can't produce evidence to support lockdowns. As I say, there is much, much evidence on many different levels to show that these lockdowns are not only ineffective in controlling the virus, viral control is largely a myth, um, but they're actually they're causing direct harm. So you know, every, every young person in their 20s or 30s who kills themselves, it seems to me, is blood on the government's hands. They are you know, not only, well, they're only following one type of science. There is an approach that can uh, be used to find the right way through a situation when you don't have all the details and when you don't know it. And that is to actually involve many different professionals from many different walks of life with many different views. And the politician's job is to synthesize those. Unfortunately, what we've had for the last nine months is that the government have delegated essentially public decision making on this to the SAGE committee. So the entire country has been in thrall to a group of non-practicing doctors as far as they can see and uh, scientists who are rather nerdy and totally banned by false models and unfortunately this has led us to the absolute travesty you know of keeping people safe that we've got where it's actually doing the opposite and they won't discuss it um unfortunately the health service has not been uh you know, has not been looking after everybody in the way it's supposed to do the nhs is supposed to be free at the point of need and obviously one need is people who are ill with covid but all other needs are people who are ill with all other diseases and that doesn't just mean headline diseases like cancer, for example, or heart disease, people who need hip replacements, people who need cataracts done. Uh, all these are important things that make a huge difference to people's quality of life. And the fact is the NHS has not been dealing with these people effectively at the same time as they've not been dealing with COVID effectively. Because as you rightly say, hospitals are super spreader environments. 
the you know when you go into hospital especially as an elderly person who this lockdown is allegedly supposedly mainly protecting despite the fact that it's isolating and making them depressed and ruining the quality of life for many of them but as an elderly patient when you go into hospital you're particularly vulnerable to picking up hospital acquired infections um, and that's that's true anyway um, you know, why the Nightingale hospitals haven't been properly commissioned as uh, places where infectious diseases can be dealt with, you know, out, away from the rest of the patients, I think is something that needs to be answered uh, and, and with a better answer than just we haven't got enough staff because I think there are ways around that. But basically, the, the NHS has been a super spreader environment for COVID. And unfortunately, because of the flawed testing for COVID that's going ahead now, uh, the, the testing is totally based on this PCR test. The PCR test has is riddled with problems when it's rolled out as a mass testing program without appropriate controls. The actual NHS is generating huge numbers of apparently apparent new cases by having positive tests, which are almost certainly not true, but also then by herding people, especially elderly people, who test positive for COVID in wards with people who definitely have COVID, it then becomes a self-fulfilling prophecy. So unfortunately, hospitals are very dangerous environments for the very group of people who we're supposed to be mainly protecting from COVID. It's, it seems to me that however you cut the response to this uh, virus, the crisis that's been caused has not been caused by the virus. It's been caused by dysfunctional responses at all levels of government and at all levels of healthcare all around the world. And the fact that all governments are copying each other that do this doesn't make it right. Uh, well, uh, I, I couldn't agree more. Just, I, I've run over time with you, John, but can you answer this one really, really quickly? Because we ought to uh, not just be destructive, but constructive. What do we need to do? Protect the vulnerable and the rest of us get back to life, normal life, while being sensible, socially distancing and, uh, you know, observing the rules. Uh, would that be the way forward? I think so. I mean, the other day when Matt Hancock came after me on somebody else's programme on talk radio, he said that he thought that the approach the government had been taking had been absolutely right. I think the evidence is that he's absolutely wrong. The way we should deal with it is to let most people carry on with their lives and to help vulnerable people shield if they want to and to coerce nobody about anything. That's not the way you can run healthcare. Excellent words, uh, John. Very wise. Thank you so much, Dr. John Lee, their former professor of pathology and former NHS consultant pathologist.